All right. In uh, this module, we're going to talk about an alternative mechanical testing method to tensile testing and bend testing like we've talked about before, uh, and that is known as hardness testing. So what is hardness testing or hardness the, the, um, the property? So hardness is the resistance to localized plastic deformation. And so we're specifically talking about plastic deformation. And we do that with a hardness tester like we have here, which basically uh, applies a force uh, through an indenter. So uh, that can be a ball bearing or um, sometimes a, a diamond uh, material. And basically uh, a force is applied to that indenter and it goes into the material uh, causing plastic deformation. And the plastic deformation, it, um, that results, whether it's smaller or bigger, tells you about the, uh, the value of hardness. Depending on what your scale, uh, you can have different measures of this. But in general, um, we measure the size of the indentation, like you see here, right? So the, 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 this is a 10 millimeter sphere that's pressed in with a known force to a material. The diameter of that ball is uh, capital D. And then uh, once it's removed, the load is removed and there is a indentation uh, with diameter D here. And the smaller the indent, the more resistance it has to plastic deformation and therefore the, hardness, the larger we say the hardness is. And so the reason we have this type of test, even though it gives us kind of a different property that we have to define, um, is because it's very easy to do and in general, since these indentations are very small, it doesn't really affect the mechanical properties of the rest of the material. And so it's known as non-destructive uh, testing. So it's easy to do. You can do this uh, mobily. So you can take this to a work site and do it. And it's not going to greatly affect the part that you're testing because we make such a small indentation. So let's look at some relative hardness values to get a reference. Um, so most plastics and polymers are, are at the very low end, um, and then you start to see metals in the middle uh, with brasses and aluminum alloys at the, the bottom, uh, then uh, some steels, uh, then you have kind of tool steels, files, um, cutting tools, uh, nitrided uh, steels, and then at the very top you have something like diamond, uh, which is, uh, has the highest hardness. All right, so there's lots of different scales that people use. Uh, one of the more common scales uh, for hardness is the Rockwell scale. And again, this causes uh, no major sample damage. It's a very small indentation. Um, and you have multiple Rockwell scales. Um, there is A, B, and C. Um, a has a diamond uh, tip. Uh, B has a uh, 1 16th inch uh, stain, uh, ball bearing. A steel, and then C has a diamond tip indenter, and so uh, the the it applies a minor load of ten kilograms, and then uh, major loads of sixty, hundred, or one hundred and fifty uh, kilograms. And so there's different scales um, uh, on this uh, Rockwell depending on the indenter that you use and the the load that you use, uh, but you typically get numbers uh, anywhere from 20 to 100. So these are unitless numbers uh, specific to the Rockwell scale. Um, and so it gives you a, a relative measure of these, these materials. There's also uh, Brunel hardness or HB um, that uh, is another scale. You know, again, it has a different indenter, different scale, uh, different masses uh, involved. And the nice thing about this is that with Brunel hardness, we can correlate the hardness value that we get with tensile strength, TS. So if you remember tensile strength, and I've got it here on the next slide, tensile strength or ultimate tensile strength was the maximum on our curve, right? And that corresponded to the maximum amount and there was plastic deformation occurring um, definitely at this point, right after the yield strength. So this is you know a measure of plastic deformation. And so therefore we can correlate hardness to tensile strength. And so if we have the 
uh, Brunel Hardness HB, uh, we can actually get the, uh, or we can approximate, I should say, the uh, ultimate tensile strength in megapascals by this uh, constant. And you see here kind of the, the correlation between those two. It's again, it's not a perfect uh, correlation or, you know, um, because there are different, it is measured in, in different ways, but um, it can give us an approximate value for tensile strength, which is useful because that uh, tells us that we can do this very simple technique, uh, Brunel hardness, um, and get uh, a, a, a um, property that we can't get without, without normally doing a tensile test or a compression test. All right, so let's look at some different scales that we have then. We've talked about Brunel. Um, that was the that actually has a 10 millimeter ball uh, sphere of steel or uh, tungsten carbide, and so that's the diameter. And then the uh, diameter that it leaves is lowercase d, and we have the force, and we can calculate the Brunel uh, based on the force and those two diameters, and that gives us uh, a number again on that Brunel scale. Uh, we also talked about Rockwell. And there's also what's known as superficial Rockwell, which is much lower uh, values. But again, they these can either be a, a steel sphere or a diamond uh, cone shape, like you see here. And you have different scales based on the forces. There's also two other uh, that we can talk about, and there's lots of other scales as well. But uh, Vickers and Noop or Knoop uh, hardness, micro hardness. Uh, you'll notice the the addition of micro. Um, that's because these use much smaller forces and uh, sizes of indenters, and it allows us to look at the hardness of small features like different phases or portions of the material of interest. So we can actually use these in conjunction with microscopes to probe the hardness of very specific regions within your material. And the same thing here, uh, these are... Um, uh, you have a specific geometry of the indenter, and then we actually measure the uh, the top view, and we measure the lengths of the indentation along with the force, and that can give us uh, Vickers or Knoop hardness based on those measurements.